What's going on guys? We just arrived here at Finn's house and we're going to do a bit of an exploration. You might recognize the pier in front of his house. And normally we go diving this way. It's one of our favorite dive locations. Uh, really bad entry, really rocky and it sucks. Uh, and we usually go that way. It's really, really awesome. But today we're going to do a bit of an exploration and go this way. We've never gone this way ever out of all the dives we've done. Uh, because it's just such a bad entry. I mean, you can see down there those kids are swimming. I don't know how they even got in. It's really, really rocky. There's a wall half the way. But we're going to walk down the road with our gear and find a little entry, even if we have to jump down some rocks or stairs or something. And then we're going to explore this area. We freed over it the other day or snorkel or whatever. And it looked really rubbly and, uh, you know, rocky and maybe a little bit of coral and to us that means little critters like nudie break and you guys last time I was here uh, we were just about at the end of the dive we were right here under the pier just kind of looking around and I found one of the rarest nudie break or flatworms that I've ever filmed and at the time I didn't know it was rare and there was a huge surge and I wasn't able to film it. It was just like such a nightmare just trying to hold still and get focused, you know, when I'm going like this, uh, cause it's only like one meter of water. Uh, but I went, I started editing that video. And of course I, for our book, I'm trying to, I have to find the ID of every species. And I, we can't find the ID for that one. It's not in our, it's not in our scientific books or uh, nudie break ID books. Uh, none of the experts really know what it is. Uh, we can't find a name. So that would be awesome if I found it again right here. Of course, if I would have known that it was so rare, I would have given it more time and filmed it more. But yeah, I don't know. So we're a little early. I'm going to go wake up Finn. Nah, I'm sure he's awake. Uh, then we'll make a game plan to go critter hunting on this side. Mm, do, 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 do. Hmm? Critter hunter. Hello, Shy. Shy, <laughs> So today, Shy and Judea have a dentist appointment. Yeah. Gonna go get their teeth cleaned. We're going to remove all the <laughs> <laughs> Are you scared, Shy? <laughs> well, Judea should be. No. They're gonna pull them all out. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Got all our gear ready. Oh. Hey! Oh. Jake! <laughs> Come here. I thought, I thought vacuuming was Finn's favorite thing. No. <laughs> so, new game plan. Check out. Whoa, there's bees! <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? He kicked the bee nest. What the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Those little baby bees. <laughs> Anyways, check that out, Jeffy. There's the uh, the pier I was talking about. Yes. So, all right, back here. <laughs> instead of instead of just diving there, coming this way, we drove down the road, 200, 300 meters. We're gonna. Leave the gear here, I'll go put the car back, and we'll start here. Yeah, this is a new dive set, we've never been here before, but the reason we're coming here, I was free diving a few days ago, and I looked down and I saw the topography, so there's a lot of small little coral bumps between sandy areas, so I think it's a potential good spot. And Jeffy's good at finding the little tiny, tiny stuff, so it looks like that kind of area. So we'll just dive all the way back to the pier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Why not? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the car over there. Oh, it's perfect. We'll take the boxes and stuff and uh... Super high tide. Yeah, apparently there's no current, so it's perfect timing. <laughs> Alright, my car's in the middle of the road. I better move. <laughs> now we were surprised to see all the little hiding spots. Spots for this guy. Meet Giovanni. Giovanni is a little weird sea slug and He's got a girlfriend as well, but I'll get to her later. Giovanni is a new species that I haven't filmed before, and I wanted to know a little bit more about him. So apparently, this guy likes to slither around and talk to her. 
She is Giovanni's girlfriend, and her name is Tatiana. So Giovanni and Tatiana, they like to hide on this brain coral and slither around looking for food. And I filmed them when they're together, but sometimes they like to crawl around on their own. But I also noticed when I was filming Tatiana that Giovanni took off on his own. I'm not sure if he was looking for food or looking for a mistress. This guy wasn't about to be anybody's mistress. I want you to meet Jorge, also known as Bob Marley. And Jorge is a little too busy with life to be looking for mistresses. Now Jorge is the type of sea slug that gives other little sea slugs a bad name. Because he really takes care of his hair. That's why he's nicknamed the Bob Marley nudie brank. Because he's got those little dreadlocks. And he's also got the little beads on the end. The little yellow ones that make him look awesome. We were pretty surprised to find quite a bit of reef and reef fish on this dive site. It wasn't just little critters. Although, we are looking for the little critters. Sometimes it's fun to film cardinal fish and stuff like that. And when I say sometimes, I really stress the sometimes part. Because, honestly... These guys are pretty boring. I gotta get back to the finding of the critters. There's also a ton of different anemones on this dive site. But again, who cares? Say hello to Henry. Henry is more of a travel slug. He likes to call himself the Nomad or Henry the Nomad. He just bought the website domain called henrythenomadslug.com and he's hoping that eventually he'll start making money as a travel blogger. Unlike Tatiana and Giovanni, Henry the Nomad Slug likes to travel around quite a bit. This guy can be seen taking selfies in all sorts of locales. In fact, just today, he was traveling all day, and he probably traveled the whole three feet across the coral. Dang, Henry, slow down. You're gonna get worn out on the travels. So, Henry the travel slug, he likes to travel around on the reef or on the sand or whatever's around. He likes to stop at these little green seaweeds for a snack. But either way, he's always on the move, and he ain't got no time for no relationships. On a side note, he kinda looks like a piece of lettuce. So if you're kinda blind and you're a vegetarian and you think this is salad, you're gonna be really disappointed when you take a bite. He is no vegetable. What did I tell you earlier about all these anemones? Here's two more types of anemones right together. But again, I don't care. Nemo's are evil. I'm telling you right now, clownfish are the one critter in the whole ocean that attack me the most. They're always biting my ears and bothering me. They're evil. Here's another one. This is more of a tube of enemy just out in the middle of the sand. The visibility was actually insane. What I'm trying to do here is look up at from 20 meters and I can actually see the surface which is something I'm not used to around here. It's usually murky and because it's always raining and there's rivers and the sediment in the water. Maybe that's why there's lots of critters. But either way, today's a really clear day. But hey, I'm not here to look up. I'm here to look down, especially at this guy. Say hello to Mildred. Mildred is an anime porcelain crab. And yeah, I did say earlier, I'm tired of clownfish and anemones, but these guys are a good reason to look at anemones. They're always hanging out on the side and just looking for food in the water. And she wasn't alone either. He had a little boyfriend there on the other side, but he wasn't really in the mood for the paparazzi and I couldn't film him very good. Ah, there. I got a better spot and I found Bob. Hello, Bob. Bob is also an enemy porcelain crab, and he likes to catch sediment out of the water, just like his girlfriend. All right, guys, I need the marine biologist of the world to help me out with this one. Jeffy found this and pointed it out, but he had no idea what it was, and he could barely see it. In fact, I have no idea how he found it. But I zoomed in on it, and I still have no idea what it is. 
We thought it was a sea slug or a loony break, but I need your help for sure on this one. So look at it. It's not a very good photo. I mean, this little guy was less than a centimeter long, completely transparent almost, and he's just blended in with the sand, so it wouldn't really focus. But you can see the bottom. It looks like the skirt of a nudie break, doesn't it? I'm not sure what this is. Is it a polyp, a lady break, sea slug, figment of my imagination, or the poop of an imaginary unicorn? I don't know what this is. You guys let me know if you've seen this before or you can identify it for me and I'll give you some extra credit points. Alright, here's another shot. Last one, I swear. I'm gonna quit looking at it, but I just can't figure out what that thing is. And here's another anemone. The only reason I'm showing you yet another anemone is just for the big variety of them. Now this one's a carpet anemone. You can tell how different it is than the other ones. And these are false clownfish. And that big clownfish there on the left, you can see he's aerating his eggs. Or maybe it's a her. Her eggs. It, I don't know. And that's kind of interesting. I'd love to get a closer shot. But I'm pretty sure they're going to bite me on the ear. Nah, let's do it anyway. Yep, there is a whole colony of evil right there. You can see the little eyeballs inside of each egg just staring at me, wondering what part of my ear they're going to bite next as soon as they hatch. I mean, look at that. Look at all those eyeballs just staring at me. Have you ever seen so much evil in one screen? I want you to say hello to Julia Roberts. Yeah, you probably recognize that name. His parents were huge fans of Julia Roberts back in the day, and they named their kid after it. Yeah, that's one way to make you hate your parents. Anyways, Julia here is a little flatworm about one centimeter long, and he loves the camera. Uh, she, she loves the camera. Now Julia has a whole life that I really don't want to get into right now because it's personal. She didn't sign a waiver and I can't really talk about her personal stuff. But the next clip I'm about to show you is insane. Three, two, one. Aww. What is that? Yeah, I told you. I'm glad you guys waited until the very end of this video because this is a brand new species that I've never seen, never filmed. And Finn didn't film it or see it either until this dive. And we were just amazed. So basically, Jeffy, our guide, he found a whole colony of these dudes. It was, it's such a weird thing out in the ocean. You don't see these things forever, however many dives. And then you come across a rock, just one plain rock with some fuzz on it. Maybe some sand, maybe some seaweed like you can see. And on that single rock, out in the middle of the sand, out in the middle of nowhere, there's an entire family of these little dudes. Yeah, that's not a golf ball with a head. That is a weird little nudie brank with a shell. No, I'm not gonna go search for the species name because it's a lot of work for me and you guys will forget in three seconds after. But let's just suffice it to say that this is an awesome addition to the Project Nudie Brink. Now these guys are super tiny and you know what, they don't speak English so I didn't actually get their names. Unlike the other critters on this video, they told me their names. So I didn't really get these guys' names. So all I can say is they look like an evil villain in the Mario Brothers game. And they're probably one of the cutest little critters I've ever f seen. <laughs> Just look at that face. They got such a weird shell as well. Sometimes the spikes are missing and there's like this green and blue polka dots pattern. It, I, it's hard to explain. Anyways, I'm glad you guys got to join me on this dive and I'll see you tomorrow.